So in preparation for today, I, um, I was thinking that at some point during this whole thing, I, I don't know how long this corona thing has been going on. I mean, it's probably a couple months or so anyway. I was thinking, you know, if I could see a show of hands, not just of the few people that are here in the room, but um, those that would be here in this videotape on Sunday, if I could show a, see a show of hands of how many people since this whole corona thing started has at some point during the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic has thought that something happened, you felt something, you did something, you coughed, you were whatever, you thought, maybe I've got it. Okay, maybe I have. So how many, so pretty much unanimously, even a thought, like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I have it. And uh, those thoughts do enter in our mind. You know, it, it, could have, it could have been, you know, more closely connected to some pizza that I ate last night that's causing some nausea or, or something like that, or maybe a cough where I've choked on something. But, you know, this will bring up a thought that, okay, well, this is a big enough deal. I'm paying attention to what's going on right here. Do I have it? And it, and it causes a need for ass assessment. In other words, I'm experiencing this. I want to assess this and see what's going on. So we are experiencing, or at least I am, experiencing a vigilance for monitoring my symptoms. You know, and I've even heard that um, in some places, and I, I could be wrong on this, but I overheard a conversation the other day about some people talking, and I think they were talking about when you walk into work, that they're actually got this like laser type uh, thermometer that they can hit you with when you walk into work. They can hit you with that thermometer with the laser on your forehead and tell if you have a temperature or not. Has anybody heard anything like that? Okay, so that's possibly going on. So they are monitoring the... Um, symptoms. And so our Bible text for today is in Revelation chapter 3, and it's, I'm going to start in verse number uh, 15 and go through 16 to begin with. And it simply says, I know thy works. And he's talking, he's talking to the church of Laodicea, and he says, I know thy works. And he says, by watching your works and by, by seeing your lifestyle and seeing by the way that you do business in life, he says, I know thy works. And he can tell from that that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert be cold or hot. But he's saying, I can tell that you're neither cold nor hot, even though I would rather for you to be either cold or hot. So verse number 16 says, so then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And this is God talking. This is God talking in Revelation. He said, because you're not cold nor hot, I'm going to spew you. I want to spew you out of my mouth. And so um, in, the, in the middle of what we're going through, I would like to share with you a few thoughts along this line that temperature matters. Everybody say temperature matters. So I, I don't know about you, um, there's a lot of members in my family that aren't particularly uh, concerned about like the temperature of food and, and different things. For me, like the temperature of food is like, it makes a difference to me. Certain things have got to be hot and some things it doesn't matter. But has anybody ever sent food back at a restaurant because it wasn't hot? Right, just because, you know why? Because temperature matters. And, you know, everything from food to coffee, you know, to the temperature in our house, I mean, there's a, a whole industry wrapped around comfort control where HVAC companies are doing everything they can to monitor and to control the temperature of our house. And, and you know, years ago, they went to comfort control in cars to where it wasn't just a thermometer or a thermostat for the whole car, but they divided it up for passengers and, and for drivers to where, you know, everybody, you know, can be comfortable in the car because this person likes this and this person like that. Why? Because temperature matters. And we see this in, in applied to a lot of other things, but the, the word that the Lord would like to get across to us today is that temperature matters in our spirituality also. And um, so in, in the middle of all this, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm heading somewhere with this, but in the middle of all this, the other night I was at the house, and it was maybe last week, 
and um, I got this phone call, and um, the person on the other end of the phone was wanting to ask me a, a question, and so, um, but I, I guess I sounded a little different, and so the person on the other end of the line, they said, they said, oh, did I catch you while you were sleeping or while you were taking a nap? And, and it was in the evening. I said, no, no, I wasn't sleeping. I, I've just got a headache. And it was like a little quiet on the other end. I was like, oh. <laughs> and I realized that there's, in, this, in this climate that we have right now with the corona thing going on, and I'm not minimizing that, but in this climate right now, there is no such thing as just having a headache. Right? So it was like, no, I've just got a headache. And it was like, Oh, and, and it was like they wanted to see if there was anything they wanted to tell me before, while well, they still had a chance. And it was like, oh, well, I've, I've heard that that's one of the first signs of the corona. And I'm like, stink. <laughs> and they get me thinking about it. And then, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I am a little nauseous. <laughs> I am feeling... A, a, a little nauseous right now and and I was I was feeling a little nauseous and you know we kind of sat there and Suzanne and I really didn't say anything about it and then pretty soon I said hey look that person said that you know you got a headache that's one of the first times she goes I heard him say that I heard him say that and then I go to another room of the house and and we know we're not trying to act like we're not really thinking about it a whole lot and then pretty soon I get a text on my phone and Suzanne has texted me all the symptoms of the coronavirus <laughs> And so as I'm, I'm looking through those symptoms of, of the coronavirus, you know, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking through. And, and just prior to that, I'm sitting here thinking, well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sleep in the camper. I don't want to expose my family to this. And, and why? Because we've moved into a climate where we're monitoring symptoms. And symptoms that we had before may not have meant a whole lot to us. But because of the, the culture that we're in right now, the symptoms matter. It can be more life and death now, probably than any other time, you know, than what we can think of. And so she sent me a text with all the symptoms on it, and, and I'm looking through that whole thing, and, uh, and I come across one of the, you know, it asks if you have, if you've had a fever, and it goes through a lot of different ones, and I can only come up with the headache and slightly nauseous, but, you know, I took a lot of comfort in the fact that I didn't have a fever. And it seems like it comes up a lot. Somebody will tell you, oh, he's sick, he's got this, he's got that. And everybody asks, well, does he have a fever? And he says, no. And I, even though it's not conclusive, when you say no, they don't have a fever, then I go, oh, well, thank goodness. You know, why? Because temperature matters. And I want to be more vigilant. I, I want to, spiritually speaking, I want to be more vigilant in monitoring the symptoms of my soul. I, I want to be more vigilant, and, and I believe that in Revelation chapter 3, as the Lord's talking to the church in Laodicea, he said, I want you to pay attention to your temperature because it's an indicator of something else. Because we can spend a lot of our life worrying about the things that can destroy this body and that can kill this body and neglect the things that can destroy and condemn my soul. And I want to be vigilant about the symptoms. In Revelation chapter 3, he starts out in verse number 13, and he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith under the churches. So he says, he that hath an ear. You know, he said, so, you know what? Not everybody's going to hear what I'm getting ready to say. That's what, that's what the revelator is saying. He said, not everybody in the church is going to hear what I'm getting ready to say. But if you could just hear it, if you could push back, if I could just push past my blind spots, the things that I can't see of myself and have an ear to hear what God might be saying that my symptoms are indicating. Verse number 14, and unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. He says, this is who the message is coming from. And because God is who he is, he can say without being judgmental, like an unhealthy judgmental, he, because of who he is, he can say in verse 15, I know thy works. I know you. Randy Brown, I know you. I know thy works. And he says that thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know, the Lord could have used a lot of different illustrations there for his reaction towards lukewarmness. You know, he could have said, you know, um, because you're not warm or hot, because you're lukewarm, you know, I'm not particularly pleased with your behaviors. He could say, he could say well, because you're lukewarm, you know, I'm just not, you're close, but you're not. But he, he has a strong reaction to this lukewarm. Have you ever watched a kid, have you ever fed a kid or watched a kid that got something in their mouth and instantaneously like, I mean, there isn't no, there isn't no, it's just like as soon as it goes in, and it's out, that their reject button hits just like that. Carrots, you know, squished up uh, uh, peas that are made into mash, is this out. That's God's reaction to lukewarm. And, and if you look at the Greek word that, that spew comes from, it literally means to vomit, to throw forth, to reject with extreme disgust. That's how God looks at lukewarmness. Why? Because with God, temperature matters. He has that much of an intolerance. God says, I cannot toler that, tolerate that amongst my children because lukewarmness is really indifference. It's not really hot and it's not really cold. It's when I develop a, an indifference in the things that really matter. When I develop an indifference in the things that have an impact on my eternity. It's when I have an indifference about the things that can impact my soul. He says, I will spew that out of my mouth. And I can find myself in a position where my lifestyle and my behaviors reveal that I am indifferent about some things that are in very important to my spiritual well-being and very important to God. This indifference can show up in my prayer life. This indifference can show up in, in, in my neglect of his word. And, and this indifference can show up in how I conduct my thought life and my lifestyle choices and my financial choices. And this indifference can, that, that God abhors can show up in how I prioritize my life. And this indifference can show up like in how I, I, I um, make my choices even in entertainment and in pleasure. Because indifference will say, oh, that's not a big deal. And no difference will say, oh, oh that, that, that thought or that, that line of thinking is too extreme. That's too radical. Or my indifference can say, that really doesn't make a difference. My indifference can say, as I go about doing the things or, or thinking about doing the things that matter to God, the indifference can say, you know, you can just skip today or you can just skip a couple days or you can just take a break. Indifference can say, well, you can make that up later. Indifference will say, it won't hurt just this once. Indifference will say, you can listen to that. You can watch that. It's really not that big of a deal. God says, it's indifference. that I can't tolerate. I want to spew that out of my mouth. Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 20. So God is bringing his children, you know, he's brought them out of Israel and he's leading them to a promised land. And, and, and he says in verse number 15, and it's a pattern for us. This is a pattern. How many knows God's got a promise and, and a plan for your life? Okay, how many value that? Don't take it for granted. How many want to make best use of that opportunity that God's given you? Here's some good instructions. Verse number 15 in Deuteronomy 30. See, I have set before thee this day. Everybody say this day. I believe that this happens every day of our life. 
I don't think we believe that this happens every day of our life, but I think that every day of our life, what we're getting ready to talk about happens in our life. He said, this day, life I have set before thee, life and good and death and evil. Reiterating the power of free choice. The, 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 what God's bestowed upon us, the free choice of what we do with our lives. You know, where our lives end up. And that's going to be a, a culmination of all the decisions we make as we walk through life. And as Christians, a lot of times, we just go back to, for me, May 28th, 1989, I gave my life to the Lord. And I was baptized in Jesus' name and walked that journey. And God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I can look back to that decision in 1989 and say, well, that, I made that decision. I chose life. But you know what? Every single day of my life since then, I've made life or death situations. i life or death decisions. Because every day, God presents that in front of me. As I choose different things for my life, I can either choose life or I can choose death. He said, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. I want that from my life. And I get to decide by the decisions that I make. See, God has a strong reaction towards indifference. And I believe one of the reasons why God has such a strong reaction towards indifference because indifference leads to something else. Indifference will lead to deception. It leads me to being deceived about how uh, I really am. And it leads us to, to be deceived about where we really are. Being deceived about our true spiritual state of being, how God sees us. It creates a discrepancy between how I see myself, indifference will do that. It'll lead you to a place and, and, and string decisions together and lead us to a place, indifference will lead us to that place where we're deceived about where I'm really at in the things that really matter. Back to Revelation chapter 3. So he talks about indifference and his abhorrence for indifference. And he says this in verse number 17, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing. So, I mean, I, I can get it. I can think, I, hey, I'm doing good. I mean, I go to church, you know, a couple times a week. You know, I've got, it's, we, we read this, and we say, I am rich, and, and increase with goods. And, and we think about, you know, the cars and the house, and increase with goods. But sometimes, spiritually, I just think I got the goods. Right? I got the goods. You know? I, I, I've got it going on. I'm okay. But there's a deception that can happen that comes through indifference that, that I can think I have the goods and, and, and know that. But God starts coming in the next portion of the scripture and saying, where I really can be. And knowest not. See, that's the deception. You think you have the goods and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You see, I can be, because of indifference, lead, make some choices and become carnal in, in my nature and, 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 and think I've got it going on and think that I'm okay and, and really I'm becoming self-reliant and, and really I'm becoming reliant on my own thinking and my own ideas and my own provision and what I can do and what I can figure out in my life. And that indifference can, can lead me to this delusional place and deception and really, I'm in a place of spiritual bankruptcy and blind and naked and impoverished in the things that really matter. I can end up in a place I don't have any desperation for the things of God. I'm getting my needs met on my own. And the way it feels to me is that my investments are paying off when in fact I'm growing bankrupt. You know, it, 
How many believes the Lord's coming back someday? I believe that. You know, and in a moment's time, in a moment's time, all the stuff I think I got going on is going to be worth nothing. Nothing. The things that are going on horizontally in this world, the security that I build in this world, and, and, and all the little plans that I have in this world, and, and whether it's my bank account or my retirement or w w whatever it is, you know, even my reputation or, you know, what, what I think, ha you know, my pop, all that stuff, popularity, whatever it is, all that stuff in a moment's time, in the, in the, in the, in the twinkle, clean of an eye that's going to be worth nothing and in that moment there's going to be a lot of people that thought they were rich and they're going to be bankrupt why because of indifference we were delusional to our real position and that says God said that's the reason why I hate indifference that's the reason why I want to spew that out of my mouth because it will lead us to a place that we're not really at. We're deceived, and we deceive ourselves. Matthew 6, says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So I seek him. I seek the things that are important to him. I become desperate for more of him. I, I, I pursue my relationship with God, and it causes me to reprioritize, and it causes me to shift my life. If, if I will allow myself to hear the words that the Lord is speaking to us today, I can remove the blind spots from my life and say, hey, look, you know what? Without God, I'm nothing. And, and, and with, if I, the, it, it, it'll change my prayer life. I, I, I won't be so apt to skip prayer before I start something else. And I won't be so apt to put down the Bible to go do something else. It'll prioritize every single area of my life. And so the Lord gives us some instructions on how to get out of that. It's almost like he's saying, I, I want you to look at where you've been investing and reconsider where I want you to invest. Revelation 3, cha uh, ver chapter 3, verse number 18. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me what I want you to get from me, gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich with white raiment, that they may be clothed, that thou may be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. He said, I want you to make this shift. He said, I want you to come buy of me something that has real value. I, I, I struggled with that. Okay, you know, what do I buy from God? What do I buy from God? You know, he's the one that purchased me, Franco. But I see it more of a trade. I see it more, what I want you to do is come buy from me. In other words, I gotta trade off my self-sufficiency for my dependency on God. <laughs> I, I've, I've gotta trade off, I'm, I gotta trade off my understanding that I tend to lean on to trusting in God. I got to trade off, you know, my ideas and my perceptions and my priority list about how I invest my time and my energy and trade those off for God's priority list. He said, I want you to trade those things off. I want you to buy from me gold that's been tried and refined in the fire. In other words, I want you to trade off into a, a currency that will always hold its value. <laughs> and then he goes into a list after that about the payoffs, about being clothed by him and how there's true wealth in all of that. And that how our eyes can be anointed and that we can start seeing things differently. 
Everybody say a shift. I need a shift. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Lay up not for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So our hearts will always follow, follow our treasure. So let's go to verse number 19. This is back to Revelation chapter 3. And so the Lord realizes that he is bringing correction. And the Lord realizes that he may be talking to some people that feel like they're doing good that they've got it going on, and that maybe they've had another one of those spiritual chiropractic adjustments that they're trying to figure out, okay, what's going on here? And so Lord, the Lord reveals his motives in correcting the church of Laodicea. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. In other words, this is the reason why I'm bringing this correction is because I love you. I love you. That's why I chasing you. So now I'm giving you the opportunity to repent, which means to change directions and come back towards me. Why? Because it's about relationship. And if you don't believe it's about relationship, read the next scripture. He said, because behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. God says, because I want to come in and be with you and sup with you and have a relationship with you, I'm bringing this to you to remove the barrier of, of uh, indifference. He said, I'm standing right outside that door of indifference, and I'm knocking on it. And the reason why I'm correcting and the reason why I'm knocking on that door is because I love you and I want to be with you. And he says, if you'll repent from indifference, I can come in and I can sup with you. God's posture is that he's seeking us. His mercy and his grace will follow us all the days of our life. He wants to remove this barrier, this door of indifference that stands between us, but only we can open it. Well, how does this benefit us? I mean, what would be the purpose other than the greatest purpose to have a relationship with him, but also it's an eternal thing too. It's impact on our eternity in verse number 21 and 22. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame I am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And in all of this, he's wanting us to see the eternal impact of indifference. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that I was indifferent about a few months ago. There was a lot of things I was, I was indifferent about. I mean, I, and I'm just throwing myself under the bus. I honestly don't know. I, I, I didn't use hand sanitizer several months ago. It was not part of my routine you know, um, before Suzanne moved into the house, I, I never had a bottle of it in my house as far as I know. You know, I, I, I'm the guy, you know, that, and if you're sensitive about this, I apologize. I'm the guy that could, um, could uh, uh, butcher a deer and eat a sandwich at the same time. You know, that, that's me. I don't think about that stuff. You know, I can be in the woods. I can be outside working in the dirt, Robert, and I know you're probably the same way. I could be working in the dirt and the muck and the mire and popping open a PBJ and eat it right there on the spot and never think about it. Best case scenario, I might go over and wash my hands in the stream and call it good. Right? Call it good. 
And I used to think that Suzanne was like a little oversensitive to all of that. Like when we first started dating, like we'd be at a park and we'd decide to have a picnic or whatever. And in the picnic, you know, wherever our picnic was, there's going to be some hand sanitizer part of that festivity. Here's some hand sanitizer. I'm sitting there thinking, what? There's been a shift in my life. And it's not just to please her. It has become a life or death situation. I perceive that differently than I did several months ago. And, and think about the changes that we've made. These are, a lot of these are going to be permanent changes. We're probably not going to greet each other the same in the future, no matter where we end up in, out of quarantine. There, there's going to be a lot of things. I'll probably, I'm probably a hand sanitizer guy for the rest of my life. You know, there are some permanent changes that have taken place in my life because of this shift, because I'm realizing that there's some things that were life and death situations that I wasn't aware of. So how many would hear what the Spirit says today and have our awareness opened up to say, hey, look, being indifferent about these things is a life and death situation. And my spiritual temperature matters because it's a symptom because indifference will lead to delusion. And I don't want a day to come when the Lord comes back and think I'm in a certain position with him that I'm not. Matthew 10, 28 says, fear not them. And it's, I think, believe they're talking to Christians that were afraid of being martyred or that it felt like they're going to be persecuted and possibly killed. I don't remember the exact context of that, but Matthew 10 and 28. Fear not them which kill the body, but not are able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body, soul, both soul and body in hell. And we don't like to talk about this side of God, but they're talking about God. Because he's the one that has the power to judge us at some day. And he will judge us. You know, there's going to be a day when we are judged of God and we're going to spend eternity in heaven or we're going to spend eternity in hell. And, and, and the scripture's saying it there, he said, you know what, we can get so caught up in this life and these earthly things and these physical things and worried about what can destroy this or, or make or break this, that we can lose track of a healthy reverence and fear for a God that will someday judge us. And God, is, God, God wraps all of this in love, God's desire. He's not willing any should perish, but all come to everlasting life. That's, that's the will of God. That's his will for every single one of us. But the bottom line is that one day he will judge. So we can get so caught up in fearing the destruction that can come to this earthly body and stop fearing what can destroy the body and the soul in hell. I want to have a healthy reverence for God. I want, to, I want to do as the scripture says and work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. That doesn't mean I come up with my own plan. I just say it's very personal for me and I'm going to make it personal between me and God. Like God, if there's any area of my life that's lacking, if there's anything, any correction that I need to make, if there's any symptom that I'm not seeing, point it out because in the end, I want to make it. And I want to reverence the fact that, you know what, he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I, I do ask God to sit with me in a tree stand sometimes and just be with me and interact with him. And, and, and I do have these personal interactions with him. But you know what, I heard it, uh, uh, somebody say the other day, well, the man upstairs and, and, and the big guy and all that other stuff. Well, I don't have those references in my vocabulary. I don't treat him like a lucky rabbit's foot that I carry in my pocket. He's still the God Almighty. And if you use those references, you know, I'm not judging you on that. I'm just talking about for me. He still is the great I am. And I can know him as my Lord now. Or I can face him someday only as my judge. Temperature matters. Temperature matters.
I don't want to live in indifference. I don't want to become indifferent to the things that can destroy my soul. Matthew 7, 13 through 15. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. That's not going to be hard to find. Verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. I'm not going to accidentally find a stray or stray straight and narrow gate it's going to be because I was very intentional and led by God and led by his word Matthew 7 21 through 23 I don't know about you I don't want to be surprised at the end <laughs> in verse number 21 it says not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Haven't I done a lot of things? Haven't I thrown your name around a lot? Haven't I done this and done that and, and gave them the appearance? But he said, and he said this, he said, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. They were deceived. There was a de discrepancy between, between where they saw themselves and where God saw them. You know, there's some things that, that there's, not a lot of, there's not a lot of evidence that God's indifferent at all. God doesn't give evidence of indifference. He's very specific. Acts 2.38 Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the plan. That's how I get started. Repentance, turning back on my old ways. Being baptized in the name of Jesus and receiving his spirit in my life. And then walking as the scriptures have said in accordance with his commandments.